Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Authorities in India's capital shut primary schools as air quality worsens. Pakistanis suffer as surging inflation pushes up fuel and food prices. And Nepal's Oli vows to balance ties with China, India if returned to power. And now for all the details. Authorities in New Delhi have announced closure of primary schools from Saturday and ordered 50% of government staff to work from home as a haze of toxic smog smothers India's national capital. Air quality index continued to breach the severe and hazardous category in most monitoring stations on Friday. As a haze of toxic smog continued to smother India's capital on Friday, Delhi's Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal announced the closure of primary schools in the city from Saturday. Parents in New Delhi had raised concerns about sending their children to school after residents complained of discomfort in breathing and irritation in the eyes, nose and throat as the air quality index breached the severe and hazardous category in most monitoring stations. Delhi's Environment Minister Gopal Rai said that 50% of government staff will work from home and advised private offices to follow suit. We have to precautions, but I was scared of the health of the children's health. This is the fact that the children's health is going to be bad for years and years. This is going to be bad for years and years. Alarmed by high levels of pollution, India's Federal Pollution Board has banned the entry of diesel trucks carrying non-essential goods into the capital. Most construction and demolition work has also been stopped to curb dust pollution, while residents have been told to remain indoors when possible and reduce the use of coal and firewood. But in the case of school, the child has no benefit from school because of COVID-19 because of the loss of COVID-19. The fact is that we have to teach the child to wear a mask. The world's most polluted capital is blanketed in smog every winter as cold, heavy air traps, construction dust, vehicle emissions and smoke from the burning of crops in neighbouring states. Dengue outbreak has hit India's northern Uttar Pradesh state with hospitals overwhelmed with patients. Most patients survive the vector-borne disease, but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 people every year globally. Dengue cases are rising in parts of India's most populous northern Uttar Pradesh state, with many people getting infected with the vector-borne disease. The fever which can cause intense pain in muscles and joints and is spread by the bite of Aedes aegypti mosquito generally affects the patient's immunity by making their platelet count take a dip while also impacting their liver enzymes. Patients in Lucknow city were being provided with mosquito nets and 34 beds have been reserved in the civil hospital. We have a lot of patients and the report we have is that 44 patients have फीवर के एडमिटेड हैं, जिसमें टेस्ट कराने के बाद 21 पेशेंट डेंगी के पॉजिटिव हैं यहाँ पर। हॉस्पिटल्स इन मुरादाबाद सिटी वर आल्सो ओवरवेल्ड विन डेंगी पेशेंट्स। दिस ईयर दी मॉनसून्स एक्सटेंडेड बियोंड दी यूजुअल स्पेल व्हिच हैज बीन अ बेन टू रेजिडेंट्स लिविंग इन लो लाइंग एरियाज अच्छा तो इलाके में और लोगों को भी फैला हुआ है हाँ बहुत है हर घर में है बुखार का मरीज हर घर में हर घर में मिलेगा तो इस घर में जाओगे उस घर में मिलेगा in Muradabad, where 107 cases of dengue have been reported, health workers were deployed to conduct tests, while fogging is being done after regular intervals to keep a check on larvae to stop the disease from spreading. 
Most patients survive dengue, but it is estimated to kill several people, many of them children who are not able to fight against it. In news from Pakistan, supporters of Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan on Friday staged nationwide protests against what they said a clear assassination attempt on their leader a day earlier. There were also reports of flashes between police and protesters in some areas. Protests erupted across Pakistan on Friday by supporters of former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan against an attack on their leader that took place a day earlier. Khan was shot in the leg on Thursday when his anti-government protest convoy to demand snap polls came under attack in Punjab province. What his aide said was a clear assassination attempt by his rivals. The former cricket star who was removed from his post as Prime Minister in a parliamentary vote in April was six days into a protest procession bound for Islamabad, standing and waving to thousands of cheering supporters from the roof of a container truck when the shots rang out. Khan was out of danger, said the head of the Lahore hospital where he was being treated. The doctor told journalists that initial scans and x-rays showed bullet fragments in Khan's leg. Meanwhile, there were also reports of clashes between police and protesters in some areas as tensions remained high in the South Asian nation following the Thursday's incident. Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah earlier in the day called on Khan's PTI party to review the former PM's security and said the shooter was apparently indoctrinated by religious extremists. Separately, Defence Minister Khawaja Asif addressed the National Assembly and said the attack on Khan was being used for political objectives. Residents across Pakistan have expressed they are irked over persistently high inflation that has shattered their faith in the ruling coalition government, which promised to bring the country out of the ongoing economic crisis. The South Asian nation is reeling from falling foreign exchange reserves and a depreciating and unstable currency. Persistently high inflation has put severe strain on the economy of Pakistan which is also reeling from falling foreign exchange reserves, a depreciating and unstable currency, as well as a widening current account deficit. A trader in Karachi, the country's financial capital, lamented the frequent price hike of all essentials has irked everybody, shattering the common man's faith in the ruling coalition, which promised to bring Pakistan out of this crisis. Pakistan's consumer inflation accelerated in October to 26.6% from a year earlier, the Statistics Bureau said this week, with prices showing a rise of 4.7% from the previous month. The higher CPI from October last year was due to the rising costs of food and fuel. और ये पाकिस्तान की 25 करोड़ आवाम को रिलीज देने में नाकाम नजर आ रही है। आप ये देखिए खाने पीने की एशिया गरीब आदमी की पौष से दूर हो गई है। Devastating floods in August and September that killed more than 1,700 people have added to the country's woes with massive damage to standing crops, subsequently keeping the food and fuel prices soaring. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves with the central bank now stand at 7.4 billion US dollars, barely enough to cover a month's imports. K.P. Sharma Ali, chief of Nepal's main opposition leader, has said he will balance the Himalayan nation's ties with neighbouring China and India for mutual benefit if he returns to power following the November 20 general election. Ali is facing the ruling alliance led by Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Duebas, Nepali Congress. Nepal's main communist opposition CPN UML party will balance the Himalayan nation's ties with neighbours China and India for mutual benefit if it is returned to power in the November 20 general election, its leader KP Sharma Oli said on Wednesday. India and China are big powers. Our policy of neutrality and non-alignment will be genuinely followed and implemented, 
Oli, a two-time former prime minister, told Reuters in an interview. Both the Asian giants have been locked in a high-stakes battle for influence in Nepal, sandwiched between the two countries, longing for a friendly government in Kathmandu. Our foreign policy will be based on mutual benefit, mutual respect. Oli, who is considered by some political watchers to be closer to China, gave New Delhi a rough time in his earlier term as he whipped up nationalist sentiment while altering Nepal's map over disputed land by including territories controlled by India. 70-year-old Oli is facing the ruling alliance led by Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba's Nepali Congress. The election is taking place as Nepal faces the highest inflation in six years caused by rising energy prices after the Russia-Ukraine war and amid growing fears of an economic slowdown following monetary tightening. Oli said the present government had no vision to tackle inflation, high interest rates and faltering economic growth. Retail inflation is currently hovering over 8% and bank lending rates have gone up to over 18%. Sri Lanka has announced that it held a productive second round of crucial talks with its bilateral creditors to restructure its debt and carve a path out of its worst financial crisis in decades. The island nation has been gripped by a deep financial crisis this year caused by record low foreign exchange reserves. Sri Lanka has announced that it held a productive meeting with its bilateral creditors, which include India and China, on Thursday as the country looks to restructure its debt and carve a path out of its worst financial crisis in decades. A statement by the President's office said the online meeting was chaired by Sri Lanka's Treasury Secretary Mahinda Sri Vardhana and Central Bank Governor Nandalal Virasinghe. The meeting represented another important step towards securing International Monetary Fund IMF board approval for Sri Lanka's IMF program, it said. Sri Lanka reached a staff level agreement with the IMF in late August for a 2.9 billion US dollars rescue package, but its completion hinges on assurances from Sri Lanka's creditors on debt restructuring. Virasinghe, in an email statement, said the IMF program and economic reform agenda will reconstitute Sri Lanka's financial buffers. During the meeting, they discussed Sri Lanka's current financial position and progress on reforms, he said. Indian and Chinese officials were also present at the meeting, Reuters news agency reported. Sri Lanka has been gripped by a deep financial crisis this year caused by record low foreign exchange reserves that has left the island nation of 22 million people struggling to pay for essential imports including fuel, food, cooking gas and medicine. Sri Lanka defaulted on its foreign debt for the first time in May. Japan, India and China are Sri Lanka's largest bilateral creditors, while China's Exim Bank accounts for about 3.8 billion US dollars in loans extended to Colombo to fund large-scale infrastructure projects. A three-day national tribal dance festival in India's central Chhattisgarh has become a hope for the revival of Buster's Godna tattoo art. It has attracted a huge response, especially from youngsters, to get inked. A three-day national tribal dance festival in Raipur city of India's central Chhattisgarh state has become a hope for the revival of Buster's Godana tattoo art, as it has attracted huge response, especially from the youngsters, to get inked. During the festival, youth from Buster region, trained from an art gallery, were seen making famous ancient tattoo artifacts on people's body in the form of tattoos. Godana artist Sukman Nag said that tattooing was done traditionally by the tribals on certain places, on the faces of people and on children's bodies as part of a belief that it will prevent them from omens and natural disasters such as lightning. He said he is proud to be preserving this art form. We are very happy to preserve this art form. बहुत लोगों के हाथों में दिखाई देगा ऐसा हमें लग रहा है और हमें पूरा विश्वास है ऐसा होने वाला है हमारे थ्रू दी गोदना आर्टिस्ट सेड अकॉर्डिंग टू एंशिएंट बिलीफ टैटूइंग इज अ प्राइसलेस ऑर्नामेंट दैट अकंपनीज फ्रॉम द अर्थ टू हेवन एंड इज कंसीडर्ड अ गिफ्ट टू द गॉड्स 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.